Hello everyone, this is John from RPGs and More. And in today's video, I'm going to talk about a motivation for your characters. One that is often not used or turned into a comedy. And that motivation is love. And no, I am not referring to necessarily romantic love, certainly not the horny bard syndrome that so many of us love to enjoy laughing about uh, or cringing at, uh, as is more often the case, uh, nor am I talking about the awkwardness of two players attempting to role play out a romance between their characters. What I'm talking about is setting up your character in such a way that they have something that they love. Whether it be a person, a place, or a thing. And have that be a call to adventure for your character or a, a reason for them doing what they do. And I think that love is often underutilized by players and by dungeon masters or G or game masters when setting up characters and plots mostly because a lot of people are scared of getting it wrong or of making people uncomfortable because love is a very personal thing for some people many people in fact so I'm going to um, but again this is not necessarily romantic love I want to make that point very clear Love, as I'm discussing it, encompasses the entirety of potential love. So we're talking about the love of a parent for a child, or for a child of a child for a parent, the love between siblings, the love that two friends can have for one another, or the love that a person can have for their deity or their nation, or even their small town. And yes, sometimes the love that someone can have for a particular family heirloom, perhaps, or what that heirloom represents. This is the kind of love that I'm talking about. And I want to open up with a quote from Erich Fromm in his book, The Art of Loving. And this book is a little dated. The first edition was in the was released in the 1950s. So I don't it doesn't pretend to be or it is not a modern take on love in many cases. But that doesn't mean that what it has to say isn't functional or doesn't work because I actually found many of the things written in this book to be rather prescient when we examine our current situation and how love works in our modern world, both the good and the bad. But there's a quote in here that I want to start with, and it's on page 123 towards the end. And it says, Love is the only sane and satisfactory answer to the problem of human existence. Let that sink in for a moment. The only sane and satisfactory answer. So, how can we use love in our games in order to make them better? The first thing we can do as a player is give our characters something that they love. I'm a big believer that every character and every non-player character in a game or a game world has something that they love, something that they hate, something that they would die for at least those three things. So let's talk about that something that they love. Now, that could be a romantic interest. Uh, I think that, that that's a, a very common one. 
well let's let's examine that really quick does that mean that they have to be like have this this you know this person that they've fallen in love with and they're going to you know try to impress this person and uh, ah you know they're they're out there um or uh or trying to get something for them the cause of their quest maybe or maybe that person maybe their significant other is at home maybe they're they're already married to this person if it's a romantic interest maybe maybe this person is at home raising the children and the reason why your character is adventuring is because times are hard the fields failed you know the the shop burned down and all their tools with it and now they've got to make money fast to be able to afford food for the winter for their children and their spouse and so they take up you know their their mother's old sword or their father's old staff you know and they don that that padded armor that their spouse quickly made for them uh, from just whatever was lying around the house and they went off to the adventuring guild and said I need to make some cash do you have any quests I can start and maybe it's that simple maybe they're they're doing it because they love someone they're doing it because they don't they don't want the money for themselves. They don't want the fame and the glory. They don't want to, you know, stay up in the tavern all night long drinking and, and carousing. They want to get in there, kill as many giant rats as they need to in the, in the sewers beneath the town, take their tails back, sell them for the bounty, and then take that money home to keep the children fed. And that's love. It's also a little bit of desperation, but there's a lot of love in there. There's a lot of, I'm going to risk my life to make sure that my children have a chance to either survive or have a chance at something better. Maybe this is what they do on, on the weekends when the shop is closed. And they're trying to save up money to send their children to school. And that's another kind of love. So there's a lot of ways you can actually bring love into your character's background. And so then they, they make that 100 gold pieces, which, you know, comes out to $10,000 in the way that I calculate money. Because I always, you know, whenever I see a gold piece, I always tack two extra zeros onto that amount to give you an idea of how much I think it's roughly worth. Uh, we were, if we were to compare it to modern day money uh, in the U.S., and and I think that that is that makes the character more interesting. It makes them much less of a caricature. Their motivation isn't I'm the best, I'm the greatest, I'm uh, I'm just going to be the that big darn hero. And you know, if you want to play that character, that's fine, but. I'm the what about I'm the family man what about um, I'm you know I'm the woman of the house my my children need someone to to bring the bread home and and my beloved husband has passed away or is an invalid and or is just not strong and I have to be the one to bear that burden for right now because you know they they can't do it or they're just not skilled at this sort of thing and so it 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 lends itself well to that motivation it gives you that idea of why is your character here and your character is there because of love and that's powerful but let's look at some other things a uh, love of nation a patriotism that's uh, very useful in a lot of places uh, because it'll it means that your character is taking up excuse me is taking up arms because they feel that their nation is at risk 
Now, maybe that's as simple as, you know, the, the local uh, goblin tribe has suddenly turned hostile and it's their village that's at risk. And so they're defending the people that they love. And it's not just, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to go and kill some goblins because I want to get the reward. It's, I'm going to kill some goblins because if I don't, my family's next. And I can't accept that. Okay? And that's that kind of, that love of my family or my village, you know, my people. Maybe my family's safe. Maybe I don't have a family, you know, and, uh, but, but this village that I've, I've grown up in that has given me so much is at risk and now it's my job, my turn to give back. So there's that kind of a love that coincides with responsibility. Another option looking at is a love of, a, a, say, an object. Well, that can lend itself well. Uh, say that object was stolen and now you quest to get it back. You desire the return of this thing, whatever it was. Okay, that's a good reason. Um, and, and these are all small things, but they, they're things that your character would do, not because there's a fat stack of gold at the other end, but because they have a motive of love, a motivation of I'm going to do this because I want to, because it is the right thing to do, because I care about something. And I think that that's, that makes a character more interesting to me. When you, after a while, you kind of get tired of seeing, you know, people that just say, well, I just want to do good in the world. Okay, how? I, I just want to make money. Okay, why? Well, I just want to be rich, so you're selfish. No, I'm not. Well, that's what you're saying. You're saying that you want your goal, the reason why you're taking up the sword is to make money because you want to be rich. Instead, t don't tell me that you want to be rich. Tell me what you want to do with that money. Let's, let's turn that around. And I think one of the easiest things to do and the thing that scares people the most is to make give it a, a reason for love. And I think that's something that um, really ought to be used more uh, than, than what I have seen in my personal life. This is anecdotal. Uh, maybe your campaigns are full of this stuff, in which case, <laughs> awesome, good for you. Uh, but I, I don't see it a lot, and I, I try to interject it sometimes. But you know, not everyone not everyone wants to do that, and that kind of makes me sad sometimes because um, it's it's it can be a beautiful motivation. It can make for great role playing moments. There's a great example. Um, I used to read the comic The Order of the Stick, and the character Haley, who's right there from the beginning, uh, is the the thief. She's a complete rogue, member of the thieves guild. Um, well, he's, you know, she says she is. There's a story there. And she has to make a lot of money really quickly. And she's completely money focused throughout the entire first arc of the campaign. And the other characters comment on it because, you know, like she's, you know, she sometimes tries to maybe hide little bits of treasure from the party or, um, you know, doesn't want to spend money on things, and everyone's like, "Wow, you're really, you're really money motivated." And you know, they, they they joke and and laugh a little bit, but and uh, some of it's disparaging towards her as a character. But then you find out that she's rate she's getting that money not because she wants to keep it, but because she has a huge debt that she has to pay to get her father. Uh, out of the clutches of people that want to kill him. And if she doesn't raise up that much money in a certain amount of time, uh, her father will be killed. And she loves her father. She, he, you know, she has mixed feelings sometimes, but she, but she genuinely cares about him and she wants, doesn't want him to be killed. And that's her motivation. And that's a great motivation for a rogue or a thief, for someone who is 
you know, that usual money grubber that everyone's uh, happy to just laugh at and say, ha 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 ha, you know, oh, you just want money. And like, no, they, you, they, they want to do something with it. Um, and so I would encourage, especially you know, younger players who are just kind of getting into role playing games, think about why your character is doing what they're doing and maybe think about what your character loves. Because when you find out what your character really loves, then in some ways the adventures start writing themselves. And the same goes for non-player characters, for dungeon masters, when they're, they're trying to create their settings. Give your, you know, you, when you're making that, that village that your characters get, the player's going to be starting their characters in, sprinkle love around. And then have them talk about it. You know, so-and-so is infatuated with so-and-so. Well, that, that's fun and, and that's a good story. But what about, what about the old couple that's been together forever? And having, just, having that moment, you know, while the, the players are walking by and they just kind of happen to glance over and there's this cute old couple sitting there with holding hands uh, on the, the front porch swing of their their village home or whatnot whatever you want to do however you want to show it but have those things be present to ground your story in human emotion because when you ground your story in human emotion then the players will be more likely to access those human emotions as they're playing their characters and they hopefully are less likely to just be murder hobos who run around killing things, collecting loot, and doing nothing with it, except holding on to it and buying magical items when they find a magical item store, which uh, I personally don't like magical item stores. I've used them from time to time, but I find them silly. Um, but these are different kind of motivations, different kind of uh, set dressings that can make a world feel more alive. Love is the answer. Why would a normal, well-adjusted person pick up a sword, put on some armor, and go down the well at the Yawning Portal Tavern? Why? You can attached like oh they've got to pay a debt all right or, or um they they're a glory hound okay well that adds something to their character that gives them something but but let's assume a well-adjusted person you know their 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 parents are still alive they're um they've got a decent job otherwise so what would motivate them to do this and love is the answer because they love someone enough to take a risk to try to give that person a better world or they love their nation enough to risk themselves put themselves to the hazard to make a change for the better that is the power of love so or another idea that classic story of the princess in the tower and the king says you know any knight who frees the princess from the tower and slays the dragon is will get the will get her hand in marriage and half of my kingdom now and the other half when i die um well what if the princess's brother or sister takes up the sword and goes to rescue them why because they don't want their sibling one they don't want their sibling trapped in that tower because they love their sibling and they want to get their sibling out and two they don't want their sibling to be beholden to whatever thug manages to uh, get there first so they take the risk because they love their sibling and not in and not in anything weird way they just for that flat out love their sibling they just want their sibling to be happy and this is the way that they can do it because you risk for family um 
And then there's, you know, you turn that story on its head a little bit. Um, maybe it's not the princess who's in the tower. Maybe it's, you know, the character's mother. Love for parent. Bringing that character, that otherwise well-adjusted character, into the world of an adventure for love. And I know that it's a, it's a trope in some cases for people to say, like, oh, my character's parents are dead. My character's an orphan. They're, I have no siblings. You know, there are no relations whatsoever. Why? Because we're afraid of dungeon masters using it against us. Why? Why are we afraid of stories that matter? Why are we afraid of playing a game and having to make hard choices in that game? Now, there are DMs and, and storytellers who have been jerks and have put family members in unwinnable situations because they can. And I don't recommend doing that. Uh, if you're going to put someone's family members at risk in a scenario, there has to be a way for them to get out or for them to get rescued or for them to uh, be successful in this mission somehow and get free. Unless the player's character completely flubs it up, uh, they should have a chance of getting their family free. All right. If you're if you're setting everything up for them to fail, you're pr probably I might want to reconsider that because that's that's the problem, or it can be. Um, now again, if you're doing everything according to session zero and what you've talked about with your with your players and everyone's cool with it, then you're fine. You're playing it correctly and don't worry about it. Um, but if you haven't cleared this with the player ahead of time and this is your big plot point uh you might want to might want to feel that out a little bit make sure that you're not going to accidentally uh upset someone that you didn't really mean to uh, mean to upset so love is powerful it should be used carefully but it should be used we should be making characters and stories and plots that revolve around love uh, another good example of love in storytelling. In the movie Troy, I believe it was King Menelaus, the king of Troy. I could have the name wrong, but anyway. Uh, he's sitting next to Paris. And he's asking Paris, or he's tel telling Paris, who's just brought Helen back to Troy and said that, uh, you know, she is Helen of Troy now. And this, this father looks at his son and says, she must go back. They will bring, you know, their entire armies and, and navies and, and, and come, can come to claim her. And he says to his father, if she goes back, I go with her. And his father knows what will happen. says why because I love her I'm probably screwing this whole thing up but the point is the line that he says that always stuck with me is he looks out into the horizon in all my years I have fought wars for land I have fought wars for power somehow Fighting for love makes more sense than all the rest. So, ladies and gentlemen, I would encourage you to consider ways so that your characters or your NPCs will fight for love and not just coin or experience points. Thank you very much for paying attention. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.